My name is Matthew. Christian here. What's going on, everyone? And this is Racing Through Life. It's a podcast hosted by Open Race, and Open Race is a real-time virtual running app looking to connect and motivate individuals, as well as help event organizers increase revenue, reach a larger audience, and provide a more interactive virtual race. And yeah, and this is Racing Through Life. We're trying to brand, you know, outside of just being a uh, sports app. So we're trying to, I guess, reach different platforms. We've got the blog, of course, this podcast. We're reaching any, di- any different people in the running industry from athletes, Olympians, um, event organizers, trying to really get a deep dive in, into their life, both on and off the track. And we have a great, great guest today, Kendall Ellis, um, NCAA 2018 world champion, 4 by 400 meters, and as well as is the record for the indoor and outdoor 400 meter. Let's give it, let's give it for Kendall. For everyone here. Not, I like the color wave a lot. It's a sick hoodie. Wow. I'm, I like it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for coming on. Um, nice to meet you. My name is Matthew. I'm Christian. Hi, Kendall. Cool. Um, so racing through life is basically a podcast, um, that we're trying to dive into, um, track and field or endurance sports athlete communities lives. Um, and we don't really feel like anyone's really, um, hitting that kind of niche. And we think, uh, it should be. So we're just kind of have a few questions that we're going to ask you. Um, just kind of going through your journey, how you became like a professional athlete, how you started uh, breaking all the records that you've broken. And um, we'll just, we'll, we'll get into it. So where are you calling from today? Well, I'm in Los Angeles. No, oh, nice weather out there, eh? No, it's not like burning, but beyond that, <laughs> like sunny. Yeah, it's cold here now. We're getting because we're calling from uh, Toronto, Canada. So it's now like we didn't really get much of a fall. It feels like it's just winter right now. So it's just getting freezing, freezing cold here. Mm-hmm. How's life? Snowed. What's up? Has it snowed yet? Uh, we had one day. We have, we've seen some snowflakes. Yeah. yeah, we've seen like not like heavy, like certain parts like out west has got, and I think a little up north has snow. But um, no, and right here we've just seen maybe like one day, a little sprinkle and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. How's COVID life down there for you guys out in LA? Um, you know, I guess we're kind of one of the hot spots. Yeah. But I think the governor's done a really good job of shutting things down. Um, you know, limiting capacity at restaurants. Still not, still not allowed to like eat indoors. Um, I think nothing over like fifty people. Uh, okay. Yeah, you know, it's he's taking a lot of precautions. I think he's yeah. taking a lot of like a lot of other places but yeah. still fairly locked down kind of sort of have you lived in LA your whole life no I'm from Florida nice good weather there too that's some place I want to go nice Florida's kind of like the complete opposite of uh, LA then <laughs> yeah. it's fully open wide open oh, yeah you know they just they're not caring down there <laughs> but it's yeah growing up in florida how did um how was growing up in florida did you like it loved it loved it i'm a floridian like you know like as crazy as the state is what people say about it i'm a floridian love growing up there um yeah that's like that's my home so i always always love florida how do you um at what point you get into running early on early on growing up like elementary school yeah, I was seven when I first started. Um, my mom and I have like different accounts of what happened. Like as far as I remember, I just remember like, ask, I remember telling her that I wanted to travel. I don't know like where I thought I was going. At nice. But I was like, I want to travel. She said that I always came home from school and was telling her how fast I was and how like beating all the boys at tag and this and that. So she was like, okay, let's. Let's like go do something with this and see. Yep. Okay. That's similar to Usain Bolt. I'm pretty sure Usain, I've read this. Yeah, <laughs> I've read, don't ask me where I've read this. I read when Usain Bolt was growing up, he lived like a few miles from his, from his like there was like a, little, a small town, like one school, and he would just sprint. He wanted, and he would always like, I think it was like wake up late or something. He had to get to school on time. So he would bolt it and just fly to school like really fast so just to make got it. Into the track? And then, yeah, now he became like the world's fastest man. It was crazy how that works. But yeah, that was like, when you said that, I was like, huh, I just, I don't know how I thought of that. that was a few years ago. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, crazy. <laughs> so since you, so you started like actually running in a track club at seven years old or how did that work for like for your school? Yeah, um, an AAU track club. Oh, wow. Yeah, started. So I was with that team my entire 
career. Um, I was running AAU from seven to middle school, maybe. Okay. I stopped AAU track once I got to high school and just focused like solely on running for the high school team. So how did, oh, okay. So did you play any other sports growing up or was it just you focused on track and that was your main focus? Um, I started, I don't know if you count this as a sport, but I danced when I was like five and six, tap jazz, ballet. Did you, you consider dance a sport? Yeah, my sister dances, so I have to call it a sport. You have to or you want to? I want to as well. Okay, so you think it's a sport? I think, I, I'd say it's, it's a sport. It's not easy, man. She comes out of those classes huffing and puffing, so. It's all, yeah, there's competition. Yeah, I consider that a sport. Yeah, I would. That's what I started with when I was like really little. I think every like little girl starts in dance. And then I played basketball. Nice. Right before track. And then I quit track for a couple of years. So during that time I was running, I was playing basketball as well. So. Hmm. Why'd you quit? Yeah. Um, I just wasn't feeling it. I was just not. I think it it started out as a punishment, actually. Um, because my parents said the season before I was acting like I didn't want to run. So like, okay, like you just won't run. Like since you're acting like it, you won't run. And that was my punishment. And I ended up enjoying like that year off from track so much. I was like, I'm just, I'm going to take another year off and, and just like chill. And wow. yeah. <laughs> so when, did you, when did you get back into it? Um, After those two years, I think I was like, I think I stopped when I was 10 and I came back when I was 12. So, okay. Yeah. Do you think... This is kind of leading. Do you I think if you right. didn't take those two years off that you might have not been where you are today? Because like, if you continued like pushing through those two years and you didn't really like it, then you stopped at like a later point in your life and then didn't continue to like those crucial years that you needed to do it kind of thing. That's a good question. I think so. I think yeah. for me it was like, just kind of, you kids start so young. And I know people who started like even before they were seven, like four. Wow like you get burned out and for me it was just something fun to do like I, I didn't have this whole like hopes and dreams of becoming a pro athlete or like going to the Olympics it was just I'm having fun every day after school going to go run with my friends so yeah I think it was important for my parents to be like okay this is you're, you're acting like you don't want to do it so let's take a step back and for me to just kind of figure out whether or not it was something I was like seriously invested in I think that's a good point. We've talked to so many different people now and a lot of them, like even the like people that are going to the Olympics, like the Olympians we've interviewed, they said they've gotten into either by like fluke or like they just come into it from other sports. Like I did like, I was a football player and then I got into track or I was a soccer player, got into track. So they didn't like start out young. And then we always say like, if you felt like you started out like really young, would you be there? And they say like, no, like a lot of people get burned out because they train so hard when they are in those like early young ages in like elementary school. And then by college, they're like, I don't want this life. Like, I just want to like relax. Do you feel like that happens like a lot to be honest? Yeah, I think so for sure. Like, especially I think now we're kind of seeing a shift in track and field. Like yep. younger, I wasn't lifting weights. I didn't lift weights until I got to college. I didn't know about like, vitamins and supplements and like recovery tools it was like you go to the track you run and then you go home and you do it again the next day like it was it was simple and I think now we're seeing like kids who are nine years old like having protein shakes with their pancakes like what is going on why are they having protein-based plant-based pancakes <laughs> so like, there's, there's such a, like a different shift in it now that I'm like I definitely think we're going to see kids getting burned out by the time they hit high school or like if they even decide to go to college that's like the new wave but yeah yeah for sure but now it's a real thing yeah mm -hmm. so when when uh when in high school I guess did you like say okay like I want to go to college for mm -hmm. track junior year yeah and that's like the year coaches start recruiting and stuff because I I know I had one stage my freshman and sophomore year nice kind of like you know like this is still something fun for me and then I yep. was like Somebody needs to pay for college some way now. So let's like use the sport for all we can, like get everything yeah. out of it. Um, I think junior year is when it really hit me, like, okay, um I I can I can get this paid for. I can go to college for this and let's see what happens after that. I'm always curious, how was the application process for you? Were there um did it come down to a few schools before you picked USC? How did um and why'd you end up picking USC? What was the final kind of decision there? Right. Um, 
I was recruited by, I could think I can say like any and every school for the most part, except, nice. except Texas, not a single school in Texas reached out to me, which is like super weird, but like, why, why is that? I still want to know to this day, but zero. They don't zero. like Florida maybe. And like the little questionnaire, none of them hit me up, but wow. whatever. Um, yeah, so it was just like, I had a, I'm like, I'm a real planner. I like to write stuff yep. down, really type A. So I remember going through like my five visits. I was like, I want a historical school that like is known for track and field. So Smart. I was LSU. Yep. LSU. I said, I do a Florida school from Florida. So I visited FSU. And then I was like, come on, just a random one. Like take a chance on it. I was Tennessee. And then UCLA and USC were my top two because I just knew I wanted to be in California. I don't mm-hmm. know. I, just, I knew I wanted to be in California. And then Coach Carroll, who was the head coach at USC, yeah. we had met a few years prior when she was coaching at UCF. And I was like, eh, I don't really want to stay in Florida. So, like, you know, she's cool and stuff. And then once I heard she was coaching at USC, that kind of like solidified the decision. I was like, yeah, really love her as a coach, want to be in California easy decision what was just talking about more so your coach what was I guess what made her so special what why what did you like about I guess her teaching and kind of um yeah why was that such a big part in your choice um she is also a black woman like myself and I really like seeing um people who look like me in position of power and she's very very good at what she does she knows what she's talking about um she you know going 3,000 miles away from home, you kind of want someone who makes you feel like home or you feel safe. Yep. With. She she had that to her for sure. Um, and the the what she was trying to build, you know, SC wasn't, when I when I signed to it, it wasn't kind of like the powerhouse that it is now. Yep. So I saw her vision for that. I was like, I want to be a part of that. Like when we become big, I want to get to say that like I had a hand in helping out with that. So nice. she, she really built like a great culture and the team she had around her and the other coaches she she brought in with her I was like yeah this is this is something special that's sick I like that I like the the thought process like wanting to build something off from like from the ground up like saying like I was a core piece and like getting to where they are today I like that um and just talking now about USC how'd you like I guess freshman year was it a big change for you how was that whole change from like high school um from being like a star athlete you know in high school and then the workload with like college because you got a business degree and then you're in college and kind of the D1 life. How was that transition? Um, it was tough. It yeah. was tough. I so much when it came to time management. Like I think that was fine, but it was like the, the workouts were like the warm up itself was like tough. <laughs> like this is different from what I've been doing and like everything was hard you know you're the freshman you have like the seniors who have been there for the past three years like they know the ins and outs they know how things work and like I'm just trying to figure out how to get to Target without having a car like it's just there was there was a lot to to handle at one time but I think you know it was fun it was definitely a fun experience and do it all over again but the transition I think for me the biggest part was just like the workload in itself when it came to workouts what um because then you said you started like weightlifting for the first time was once you were in college so that was probably like for you you were like what is going on like my body is so much more sore than it is like what is happening um for dieting was your did you have to change like nutritionally from high school to college or was that more so you'd stayed the same you'd think um that was definitely a a shock I think yeah I remember like we we just didn't know, like, you know, I don't, I don't stand by, I don't think you should never have a cookie during like training. You should never have a cookie during. Yeah. Training. It's not realistic. And I think mm-hmm. fresh, that's kind of the way we thought we're like, we can't have this, like we can't have that like ever. Yeah. And it, I remember like the one time we were like, we had it, it was just, there was no limit because we sat here like, not allowing ourselves to have it for so long and we did finally have it we're sitting here eating like 50 cookies I'm like all nice. right isn't the way to do things so i think that was definitely an adjustment period trying to like you know you're grocery shopping for yourself you're cooking your meals or like going to dining hall the dining hall doesn't care that you're trying to be an elite athlete so yeah. saying go to the pizza that's there um 
that was that was definitely an adjustment for myself freshman year. No, no, that makes sense. Why'd you end up going into business? I don't I want to be my own boss <laughs> like I don't like taking direction from authority like that so I think for me it was like I want a degree that um is kind of applicable to everything you know yeah. if you're not sure exactly what you want to do having a business background will always kind of get you in the door um yeah. combination of that not wanting to be somebody's employee um and it was just I've always been very very business minded um so that was just kind of a natural fit. I was like, yeah, what else? What else would I ever major in if not business? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I like business as well. And I think that's a good mindset to have is not like kind of um, changing to follow like the status quo. And yeah. like being your own boss is obviously um, everyone's dream. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's awesome to hear. Uh, I kind of want to get into like your life at U USC. Like you're, it's in the like, middle of LA right the campus yeah. so how was um I guess just like life outside of like track and, and school man did I have one outside of that um it's cool like you know I'm not from here so it it was interesting to see like how hard the Los Angelinos and Californians as a whole really go for like their state like they they love it they love it here yeah. um and I can say like, there's always something going on. I can appreciate the city for that. There's always something happening on the weekends. There's always something to do. Um, so I like that aspect of it. Like we were never bored. We were never, never bored. Like of course there's stuff going on on campus, but if not on campus, then you can go 15 minutes into downtown. Um, you know, just casual stuff. We were like, we went bowling a lot, went to the movies. There's always a place to shop. The beaches are always yeah. like a go-to spot. So. I appreciate that I, I'm not in a boring, a boring city. Would you say if you ever had like a, like a weekend off, like where you could just hang, like hang out with friends, do whatever you want, like what would, what would be your go-to thing? I like to eat. So nice. I like a beach day and then going out somewhere to eat after that. So that's, okay. a, that's what I like. Awesome. That's cool. Did you, did you see any like celebrities walking down the street? Yeah. <laughs> I've seen... I've seen some people. We went bowling one night, and Justin Bieber shows up. Oh. <laughs> it was like Wiz Khalifa, Chris Brown. Um, <sighs> they did at the airport before. Um, I saw Post Malone. Yeah, um, that's sick. Yeah, just like a bunch of random people just out, out and about. But yeah, definitely have celebrities. Yeah, that. for sure, some random people in that list. Okay, that's sick. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> going to the just going bowling. Oh, what's up, Post? What's up, man? Loving, loving the new track. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. That's crazy. No, oh, that's cool. That's like so like like it's probably like normal for like people down there to see those like um, celebrities just walking around. Right. Like, like no one, no one reacts. I'm like yeah. I, I had to learn. I'm like okay, we're not gonna sit here and fan girl like this is. This is the normal LA lifestyle, apparently. So that's that's, <laughs> that's pretty sick. That's <laughs> pretty cool. Anywhere outside LA, they get I draw my drink. I'd be like, "What the hell?" <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's sick. Um, so back into like the track at um, USC, um, you broke some records there. Tell us about kind of like your, I guess, um, build up from like freshman to senior year, um, and your accomplishments throughout those four years there. Three years. Three she graduated years in three. <laughs> yeah, I read I read the email. Three years there. Um yeah, I was there for all four years. So I graduated early, but I was like, I want to stay. No, shut up. No, that's not fair. <laughs> I, I read three. Fuck. <laughs> graduated, <laughs> but you track still. That's true. Yeah. Um so I think you know, my breakout year wasn't until my junior year. And okay. I think that too. Kind of getting comfortable freshman, sophomore year, and also just like I've had the same coach from when I started running track through high school. So for me, I was like, okay, coming into college this is my first time having a different coach. This mm -hmm. is my first time like meeting somebody new. And it took a while for me to like develop that trust and really believe that he knew what he was doing and stuff, which of course he did, but I just didn't buy into it for a while. Um, so I think junior year is when I really, really had my breakthrough. And that's when, I think that was my first time making the final at nationals and I got third, I think. Um, 
that was the year I made my first world team. Nice. And senior year, we just kind of kept piggybacking off of that. I won indoors. I got second outdoors and made, um, and I really like solidified myself as like one of the premier quarter milers in the NCAA. So it was, it was definitely a, not an overnight thing with me. It was a transition period, like all four years. And I think like each year you kind of saw increments of getting better and better and better. And it was like, okay, so like by the time she hits her junior year, she can, she can really do something. But it was definitely a process when it came, when it came to my four years. Would you say that even from, I guess, high school growing up all the way throughout college, did you have any bad injuries, anything that kind of came up and I guess slowed down that process or no, or you say you were luckily injury free up to this point? I was super lucky. I've never yeah. had anything major that like took me out. I've had some little like nicks here and there, a um, couple like PRP shots, cortisone shots, but nothing that like ever took me out for an entire season or, or something that was super severe. So I'm lucky on that front for sure. That's good. That's awesome. And in 20, so 2018, was that your senior year? Yes. Okay. So in 2018, we have like a little video when you came back and won the, the outdoor four by four, four, four by 400 meter. And I want, I want to share my screen quickly and pull that up. So nuts video, by the way, yeah. in cry jaw dropped at that last really? little stretch. I could not believe it. So this is the last stretch here and you're in third place right here. Uh, I think that's Purdue and then Oregon. Wait, before we play it, wait, how many times have you seen this video? A lot more than like I want to. <laughs> you don't like, wait, you don't like watching it over? I don't, it makes me nervous again. And like, I don't know. It's a, it's a cool moment, but I'm like, oh man, like. How was like at this point in the race? Do you remember what you were feeling? Like, what was going through like your head? She's not that far away. Really? Damn, that is That's sick. A good mindset. I was like, whole like, there's no way. We literally we just watched it. I was like, yeah. What? There, we literally like, wrote you off. And I was like, there's no way. Like, like Purdue has to take this. Meters left. And you got that's like a solid twenty meter head start. Uh, yeah. And I, there was even more prior to this. Mm -hmm. like you came back even farther <laughs> but yeah so this is the final stretch here um we'll just play quick for you. dude like <laughs> like even at this point we're like 40 meters left no, what that is nuts like <laughs> that is unreal first of all congratulations that was crazy um wow that's just heart that's just speaks so straight hard. straight up that is straight up like you knew you were when you were not losing that race when that bend after that bend you're like i'm winning this race yeah no i was like i we, we cannot go out like this like the team titles on the line i already lost the open 400 earlier today like wait what happened earlier in the day i ran the open 400 and ended up getting second and i was just like really oh. so i was like no like this is my last race as a Trojan. We have to win. Wow. That's crazy. Did you feel, so we, we slowed it down yeah. afterwards and we saw it when you were passing Kentucky here. <laughs> yeah, well, let's go with Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> we saw this part right here. So when you're passing inside, she just like whacks you with the baton. Right here. She's going to swat. Boom. She's, right? She just hit your arm. She just hit your arm. Yeah. And I was like, you know, it's a bad habit of mine, but it's worked out in my favor so far. Like I like to pass on the inside and my yeah. head, I'm not pushing you, but there's, there's, you left enough space for me to get on the inside. So I'm going to take it. I'm not going to run any extra by going around if I don't yeah. have to. Quick question. You say bad habit. Is that something that is not typically like you, I, like, is, I don't know. Is that something that like you're not, common? yeah. Um, well, you're not supposed to give the person enough room to pass on the inside. Yeah. It's kind of the runner's fault. Like, you shouldn't yep. leave space to let someone slide in on the inside. And I know I say it's a bad habit because I've done it, like, multiple times. And, you know, it's kind of a risky game to play. Um, but there's always been enough space. So I just. Did you feel her hitting you? Yeah. Did there? you know? Like, she just hit me. I was like, she hit me. <laughs> I was like, okay, like, you know, it is what it is. Like, 
I'm planning on passing you, so it doesn't really matter. Like, it's fine. It is what it is. But was Kentucky favored? Like, did they? Because I I heard in the earlier in the video that they were, um, they had like a bad first like leg, so they just weren't doing well. But did were they like favored to win or something? No, um, no. Okay. I think they were favored to to like be in the mix. But okay. I don't remember, I think. I can't remember who had the fastest time coming in, to be honest. I'm not sure who it was. Um, but yeah, they, they were favored to be like in the mix, definitely. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they were favored to win. After you won, what, what was going through like your mind? Um, I was kind of just like, because I, I didn't hear an announcement or anything. So I was like, I don't know if we won. I don't know if I caught her or not. Like, I really, really hope we did. So I just kind of sat there for a while until my teammates like came over and started hugging me and I was like oh my gosh like we did it like we just won a team title like finally because it's been you know four years of us trying to win this and finally as a senior like we got it done like that's incredible like you know I didn't know from my angle versus the camera angle like I didn't really know how what a big distance yeah. that or anything so for me I wasn't like super impressed or anything with like winning the relay I was just like we just won a team title like we just did this so yeah that video has it's on ESPN's channel has 1.5 million views okay. which is crazy that's how, how like did you want like are you the type of person that likes to watch back like your clips or like you were like I don't want to watch anymore like I'm getting like so many flashbacks here um I didn't watch it I don't think I watched it for a while to be honest okay paid attention to it until because I deleted on my social media like prior to nationals and then like I re-downloaded it and I saw like all the comments and, like, I saw it like going viral and I was like oh wow like hey this is weird I have 10,000 more followers where did this <laughs> what it's been four days <laughs> yeah, like my Instagram was private at first so I was like where are all these followers coming from and, like I saw it I was like oh wow like that's cool I didn't know it would blow up like the way it did but yeah, at first, I kind of just never watched it. I was just like, you know, this is nice. This is cool. I'm glad people are, like, loving it. And I think more recently, I've watched it now because, you know, it'll get circulated again. And I'm like, oh, that was, like, a really – that was a cool memory to have. So now I, now I watch it more often than I used to when it first, like, happened. Out of your whole running career to date, what's been the best running moment? Would, would that be it? Or would it be, like, something else that you would take over that? something I always feel bad when I say this because I really really do like appreciate that moment yeah, and, yeah. like the way people responded to it and stuff but for me personally um I think 2018 indoors um yep. yeah I got the American record and the collegiate record and that for me was like a really really big race just because like you know coach and I were like we weren't planning on the record we're just like let's let's go get the win and like yep. take it two records on top of that when we were just we were just out here trying to win um that that was a big moment for me so that's like my favorite my favorite all-time career nice that's awesome how much different is it running um indoor versus outdoor because i didn't i didn't even know that the indoor track was like curved curved yeah it's like a, the bend's a little curved yeah it's a bank track so i think for indoors it's like it's not always about who's the fastest. It's kind of like who has the best strategy. And I think you have to be pretty aggressive to run indoor track because like, you know, getting to that break first, who's, who's willing to really go for it. Um, yeah. so, you know, indoor is different. It's cool. I, I appreciate it for what it is, but you know, it's not a favorite. I like outdoors better where like, there's no competing to get to the inside first. It's just everyone's yeah. standing and see you at the finish line it's, yeah we saw we watched that video as well when you won that and you were on the outside and then cut in three lane like from two, behind three, yeah on the inside of the girl that was in first place yeah forever going on the inside it's just, there was space That's i swear it on camera but there was oh. enough space no it's good i think it's smart like you i wouldn't want to go around that so much more like energy <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome wow um that's great. So, so um, post college now, um, what have you been up to? What's your kind of uh, goals for the future? I know the Tokyo Olympics got uh, pushed back, but is that uh, your kind of next step? Yeah, that's the plan. Um, I'm hoping they happen next year. But 
that's that's what we're training for that's what we're working for so um olympian is definitely the next the next step in this journey um yeah that's that's all i've been doing for the most part now is just training i'm back in school getting my mba so i do that um i work with a company called voice and sport mentoring young female athletes so that's fun but yeah that's pretty much what like my day-to-day looks like did, did the trials did you already compete in the trials or no they didn't happen no they didn't happen they were supposed to happen like i think they got canceled or the olympics got canceled i think about a month and a half before trials would have been okay okay and um why don't you tell us a little bit more about the mentorship thing you're doing yeah is that um is that kind of just like calls you have with uh, the girls it's like for me i know growing up like i really really wish i had a mentor in the sport i still yeah. wish I had a mentor in the sport um just kind of like tell me what to expect or like what the pro life would have been like, you know, cause you see one thing on social media and that's just not the case in real life. So I wish I would have had someone to kind of introduce me to that. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a company that they, I did a podcast for one day actually. And then she reached out afterwards and was like, Hey, here's what I'm doing. I think you'd be a good fit. Um, so it's just a platform to allow young women like 13 to 22 come on speak with a professional athlete there it covers like a ton of sports it's not just track and field so they can ask their questions um ask about your journey get advice and it's something i really would have appreciated when i was younger growing up in the sport so you know any way i can give back or kind of just let people ask questions and bounce back yeah. ideas I'm, I'm down no oh, that's amazing that's really good good for you a lot of people kind of um make it kind of and then just like forget about where they came from yeah um so yeah. That, that's that's really great um and also with the mba what, what are you doing with that how's that going is that something you kind of just started because covid um i we... started in january of this year okay. mm -hmm. and it was kind of just like i had had a year of being pro under my belt and i was so bored like you know training can only take up so much of my time and i'm like i yeah. just I have so much free time, like, I'm bored, I have nothing to do. Um, my parents have like, always wanted me to go back to school. So I was like, you know what, let's do it. And then it just so happened that COVID hit this year. So I had even more free time um, to really, really focus on school. So the timing just kind of worked in my favor. And then I'll be finished by next January, February. Nice. So Perfect. It worked out really, really well in my favor. So what's a typical day like look like for you right now? Training, eat, study, maybe yeah. bake? Um, let's do Mondays. She Maybe bakes. Mondays. She's a baker. <laughs> I do like baking. I haven't baked anything in a while, but my training partner has been asking me to make something. So I'll, I'll do that eventually. But um, Mondays, it's like weights in the morning, um, get lunch after that, practice in the afternoon. Um, head home by like five, um, cook dinner when I get home, maybe do homework, watch TV, go to sleep, do it all over again the next day. So. What do you like to watch on TV? I really like YouTube. And I know it's not like real TV, but like, I just, everything's on there. So like, Everything. Yeah. So much. Who's so. your favorite YouTuber to watch? Um, I don't have a fave. Honestly. You can probably see a few of them walking down the streets, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, it's just whatever comes up. I like vlogs. I'm one of those people who like likes watching other people's life because I don't know, it's just so different from my own. So yeah, yeah, huh. kind of cool. a lot of like. Nice. And what's your what's your favorite thing to bake? I was just about to ask that. That's a good question. <laughs> I made a cheesecake one time and I didn't like quite get it right. So that's one thing I want to like do over. Um, it was easy, but I just, I just, the confidence just wasn't there and it showed through like, in the end result. <laughs> so I needed to redeem myself on a cheesecake and yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's Any I specific like. kind of cheesecake? Nope. It was just plain old cheesecake, plain cheesecake, you know, right. so it was small for the first time. But I normally don't bake stuff twice. 
Um, I like to bake everything once because there's just so much to try. Yeah. I like have done everything that I want to do. Then I'll like repeat stuff, but there's too much effort to be repeating. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. I think it's cool to try new things. <laughs> I don't. I don't really like cook or bake. Like the best thing I can make is like a grilled cheese. I can make a really good grilled cheese. Like <laughs> really good. No, like you gotta get ham. It's all about getting ham and cheese. Really? Ham and cheese. So good. You gotta, you should try it. You would like it. Ham and cheese. Ham and cheese, grilled cheese. That's pretty basic. That's not not the way I cook it. <laughs> not the way I cook it. It's fine. It's fine. Do you do you cook as well? Um, no. no? Yeah hate cooking so much I feel like that's so common like people yeah that like baking hate don't cooking like cooking vice versa. yeah no it's just like i don't see the joy in it i don't like no there's too much prep there's too much cleanup there's like wow. and i just feel like my meal is not going to come out as good as it would if i ordered it from a restaurant so i just rather not so do you, do you order out a lot then yeah, yeah. i like your dash and like grub love and Uber eats bills like ridiculous i need <laughs> Okay, I have a good question then. What is your favorite fast food chain? Like you need a quick something. It's like a day off. You want to grab a, a, your favorite fast food thing. What are you gonna get? Popeyes. <laughs> Do they have the new chicken um, burger there? I have the sandwich. I did try it. I wasn't a fan. Um, what would you rate it out of ten? The sandwich. A four. A four. Yeah. What didn't you like about it? Okay. Well, I tried the original and I tried the spicy. Yeah. But like mayo. So like the spicy is only spicy because of that spicy mayo, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it's like automatic no for me. I don't like mayo. And then the original, it just tasted like all Popeye's chicken tastes the same. So it just tasted like the regular chicken put on some bread. And I was like, I just... I'd rather eat a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. If I was just, yeah, she just read my mind. I was just about to say this proves my point. How much better is the Chick-fil-A sandwich? Ten times. Ten Dude, times. night and day, man. I've been saying it. It is the, that is, that will go down, in my opinion, as the best fast food I'll ever have. Chick-fil-A sandwich. That's the best chicken sandwich. We just got, so we only have two Chick-fil-A's here. Yeah. Um, and they just recently got them. And the Popeye sandwich, too, just came probably, uh, like month, a month, ago. month and a half, month and a half ago. So, but since it came, we've been getting it like nonstop. And I'm like sick of the Popeyes now. I'm like, I don't want this anymore. Yeah. We we had Chick Fil A. We went to Vegas for New Year's, and we had Chick Fil A for the first time there. <laughs> Best food. And so the service though in the states is so way much better. better way better. Yeah, like we we had a girl, um, like we were just eating our food, and someone spilled their drink. Someone spilled their drink, and like in the matter of seconds, someone came over to like ask if we needed like help cleaning. Started it up, cleaning it. Got us a new drink. It was like crazy. I never in Canada, I, you, no one would even have looked at us. Even like, okay, there's <laughs> luck. Okay. Yeah, it's the Chick Fil A way. I love it. How their chicken nuggets, I love their nuggets or so their sauce, man. Like, I'm a fan of Popeye's tenders but more though than the chicken nuggets. Agreed. I agree with you on that for sure. Really? Yeah. What's your go-to sauce for the, the Popeye's nuggets or Popeye's tenders? I'll do like buffalo. I'm not buffalo? a big like sauce person, not even gonna lie. Condiments are like eh. Do you like ranch? No. Oh, she I didn't like the mayo. I was I could have answered that because she didn't like mayo, so I felt like she wouldn't well, like the like ranch. Mayo. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. There you go. I'm not a big condiment or sauce person. I'm like really, really big. I like their fries too better than Chick Fil A's. No. Fries, fries. See, I okay. I'll say because I like the sauce better at Chick Fil A, so I like the waffle fry with their sauces. You know what I mean? I like that's what helps me out with the waffle fries. I think Chick Fil A is my favorite. I have Chick Fil A. I I read really Chick Fil A. Really like Chick Fil A. Really like Chick -fil -A. Love Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. If you're watching this, get some more Chick Fil A in uh, Canada. Or if we can do like somehow sponsorship, that'd be <laughs> sick. If we can do like an ad read per thing, just for like free chicken for a year, I'd be so okay with that. Wow. Well. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, um, thank you so much for your time. I think um, we have like kind of a few questions left, and then we'll go into like a speed round. Yeah. That we do. Um, so the first question I have is like, what um, what are your kind of goals and for the next five to 10 years ish. I know if you don't want to look past like Olympics, I know a lot of people are like, 
focusing. I'm just on focusing, that. yeah. But if you can look past it, um, go for it. And also, like, do you have any advice for um, younger athletes coming up that want to kind of follow your journey? Okay. Um, next five to ten years, I will say the next five years are like heavy, like prime for like track and field because we have like Olympics, World Championships world championship olympics i think it's like the next four or five years are like back to back -back competition so that's what i'm looking at um kind of become an olympian world champion all that good stuff and then 10 years oh my gosh 10 years my crew my crew will probably be done um i'm 24 now so 10 years i'll be 34 and you know hopefully i'm like mba to use married or mom maybe using my degrees for something um i want to work for the ncaa um nice public policy so if i could go and implement some change at the student athlete level that would be helpful so yeah what kind of change do you think they need (laughs) all of the rules all of them need to go i think they just i don't think I feel like they make decisions not from the the lens of a student athlete. It's just very like, okay, let's make these rules, but there's no looking at how it actually affects um, the student athletes themselves. It looks good mm-hmm. on paper and it sounds good, but in reality, like the, the the choices you're making are not are not beneficial to those it matters for. Um, I think and we need to revisit that like student athlete being paid conversation within. Yeah. It. So, yeah, I still get to Didn't they, they lifted that for, or they plan on lifting it for football? I think Is it was true? for football for like a year or two. They're doing like, you're now you can get paid for your image and likeness. I think. Oh. Yeah, like your personal brand. You can do that before, right? That's what it was. Yeah. And it's, it's like only certain states, I think California is like going to be the first state to adopt it in 2021, I think. Yeah. Yeah, things like that. That's crazy that like that wasn't a thing before. Do you know how much money like, that they, they, now, makes? they now own you and like you can't even it's not even you could be doing something completely different than what they're like marketing you for. Like you could run like your own like food business and like or for example if you know destroying um the YouTuber, the YouTuber. Hat got uh, kicked out of you UCF, yeah, UCF yeah. for having his own YouTube channel. And then he said they had to pick. He had yeah, to pick had to either pick staying on the team or the YouTube channel. He's like, okay, I'm getting, I, I got to get out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Things like that, definitely. He was kind of like a, a change maker in that kind of, Huge. starting that kind he of was path big. to allowing them. So, yeah, I, I like that. That's, that's really cool that you want to kind of do something to make a change and that affected your personal life. Mm-hmm. And then I think for younger athletes who aspire to um, run in college and be a professional athlete. Um, and that's such like a wide, broad thing. Um, One thing maybe you wish you heard like in high school. It's, it's super cliche and I say this all the time, but like genuinely like have fun and stop taking. I took things so seriously that like I just, I lost so many moments where, like, I should have been having fun with my team or, like, I should have had, like, fun memories of, like, winning the state championship. But all I can remember is, like, how stressed I was. And Mm -hmm. it takes away from so much. So I really, really just say have fun. Like, stop for a second, take a deep breath, and, like, enjoy, truly enjoy, like, the opportunity you have to, to go to these different places and meet different people and stuff. That's great. Yeah. And that can reflect too in your, 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 um, your play, I guess, and your your skill level, because when you're, you're stressed out, that puts like an extra toll on your body that you not perform as well. Um, so yeah, that's great advice. Um, thank you so much for that. I'm sure, um, someone's listening that uh, will definitely affect them and hopefully for the better. Um, well, obviously for the better. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Um, okay. We'll go into the speed round now. Uh, so we got a few list of questions. Just kind of give us um, your your first answer off the top of your head, and then at the end, there's there's one question that you can take a little bit longer on. Okay, hold on a second. I need to get my charger. So my computer's gonna die, and I don't okay. want to in the middle. Of that. All right, all right, we'll be here. Sorry, Popeyes. Is that fine? Like, what if they're the same? That's fine, right? Wow. 
Yeah. There you go. All right. Okay. You ready? Yes. All right. So first up, favorite food. Chicken wings. Nice, good one. Favorite cheat meal. Pizza and chicken wings. Good. Nice. Okay. Like, whoa. Wait, <laughs> boneless wait. or bone in? Bone in. Okay. I like boneless. I like boneless too, but I respect the bone. Okay. Now follow up question. What's your favorite wing flavor? Buffalo. Okay, buffalo. Okay, that's that was good. good. Okay. And do you what toppings on the pizza? Sorry, I'm really specific. Either double pepperoni or pepperoni and sausage. Nice. Okay, cool. Love that. Biggest fear. Oh my gosh, getting trapped in a water in a water tube slide. Like you know those you know like water parks how they have like the clothes. Yeah. I'm just I I can't go in them because I'm just, why? I just have this irrational fear that like I'm gonna get stuck. And no one's gonna know I'm in there until like they realize, hey, Kendall never came out, and they're not gonna find me until like more and more people come down, and then it's just like a pile up of like bodies <laughs> inside the water tube slide. Oh my, my god! I'm gonna be honest. At the start, I thought you were going like drowning or like some sort of like that's a common one we've gotten, and the water slide I've never heard. That's unique. That's a unique one. Where it came, I've never had any bad experiences, but it's just a fear that like I've always had. And the last time I went, I tried to get over it last summer in Cancun, and I went down and like I was having a panic attack, <laughs> and I just no. Should be yeah. like, oh, that's oh, no, that's awesome. Gosh. I mean, yeah, wow. Wait, so to another follow up. So do you not like you don't like water slides or just the specific the ones? One. Yeah. Closed one. Okay. Think, yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Most ones are just like it feels like you. It's just pitch black. Most of them. There was so. one, and I'm like flashbacking here. I was on like a vacation. I don't know where we were. Maybe in Florida, like some like Disney amusement park. There's a slide, but it was like the black hole one. It was the dark one, but it but there's music, and it was like a fun like dance party, like a dark dance party. So they were playing like music going down, and it made it fun. Kind of like their music made it like lightning that we couldn't see anything. It was just music, like some disco light, like some you couldn't see. It. Yeah, that was a fun one. <laughs> if you want to try to get rid of the fear, that side would be good. Well, I'll think about it. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> they just play scary music. <laughs> oh, that's bad. That would that would be bad. Um, um wait, is it my or you? Yeah, it's your turn. It's your turn. Celebrity, celebrity crush. Michael B. Jordan, I guess. But that's not a good one. One, but like we'll say him okay that's a good one favorite clothing brand misguided okay love that favorite music artist drake drake okay cantrano let's go <laughs> Tana, i want to just comment i don't actually like drake I don't like his music. That. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just pointing like she might assume she might have just had an assumption like they probably love drake because they're from toronto i don't yeah, like drake you like his music? Yeah, he's good. Yeah. He's like, and you can listen to it at any time. You've never he, played a Drake song. No, I've never heard it's you like, play a Drake song. It's depend. I don't have the place to play it. That's fair. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna yeah. So I try to get back to this. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, biggest running myth. Oh, that like we all eat like we all carbo load before a big race. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So how does that go? Like I've heard that. Is it not? What do you eat? What? It's not something sprinters do, and I'm a sprinter. So people ask me like, "Oh, like, are you carbo loading tonight before the race?" And I'm like, "No, like I don't, I don't do that. I'm a sprinter." <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Okay, uh, guilty pleasure. Is there? In the oh, okay. If you could travel to one place in the world, where would it be? To Haiti. Nice. Why? What's reasoning? It just looks so pretty, and I like the beach. So. Love it. Have you been? No, never. <laughs> okay. so where would you oh yeah i guess we're I mean, right yeah that's true that's true that's true i'm just curious fine um okay this one you can take a little longer to think about because we want a reason as to why as well if you could have dinner with one person dead or alive who would it be and why it's a good question it is i'm gonna say rihanna Rihanna, that's a good one. I, I would have said Justin Bieber. That's what I would say. I really love him. I was just watching him the other day. Um, but I say Rihanna because, like, she's, first of all, she's just super cool. So I feel yep. like 
casual conversation about like anything I don't have to like sit here and ask her like these like super wisdom guru questions because she's like, an icon yeah and like she I like how you know she started out as an artist but like she's done so many other things and like has, has done well in everything yeah. so I think that's that's cool I like to like pick her mind about that and just kind of how she did that and stuff and ask her if she's ever giving us more music maybe one day but yeah she's awesome. cool so cool all right well that's all the questions we have um thank you so much is there anything you want to kind of shout out no i just appreciate you guys this is a lot of fun so thank you thank you yeah same here lots of fun um and yeah we're rooting for you for the uh 2021 tokyo olympics go get that gold medal and um i want to see another 30 meter last minute win that would be <laughs> sick i will literally scream so hard i'd be sick <laughs> Oh, thank you. I appreciate you guys. All right. Well, have a great day. And um, best of luck training. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. See you. Bye.